Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. We've got another episode today from our Know Your Foe series. This time we're going to be focused on how to deal with the latest Orc Codex using our Necrons. So we actually did a poll on the channel and the Orcs won the poll with 47% of the votes. Now I still plan on looking into the Grey Knights as well as the Death Watch books but we do like to get the community involved here on the channel and the Orcs have won the poll. So this Codex actually came out last month which was September 2021. So let's begin with the video with the basic faction abilities that you're going to see on the tabletop when you're playing against the Greenskins. First we've got Here We Go which is the ability to re-roll their charge rolls for a unit. Now this one's very similar to the old edition except now they've got to re-roll both the dice rather than selecting either of the dice. Then next you've got the new Beast Snagger rules. So models that have got the Beast Snagger ability get a plus one to their attack hit rolls against vehicles and monsters and furthermore they're going to get a six plus invulnerable save as well. We're going to be talking a lot more about the Beast Snagger units later in the video. Next is the Daka weapons which has taken quite a change in this new codex. Previously sixes were more hits with the Daka weapons. Now this has been replaced with the following. So Daka weapons now have two values. For the number of attacks they make and when the model shoots a DACA weapon use the first value if the target is within half range and if it's not within half range you use the second value so it's got a very similar feel to bolter discipline not quite double shots it's usually double shots minus one not in every case but in most things it's along those lines then the next one is the mob rule this has also been changed from the previous edition so previously it related to how many models within the units or nearby units now it's while units are within six inches of a friendly clan mob unit that is not under half strength the unit is never considered to be under half the strength so another ability which i think is slightly worse than before in some ways because large mobs can now still fail a morale test but it will likely aid those smaller mobs that have already been weakened. Next is the ramshackles which is now on all the vehicles as opposed to just a few select vehicles and each time an attack is allocated to a vehicle unless the attack is a strength characteristic of eight or more you subtract one from the damage characteristic to a minimum of one. So very similar to how the dreadnoughts have got duty eternal there but this is going on all the orc vehicles and that's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt when you're trying to get rid of them. Then of course they've got the infamous war. This is quite a long ability here so if the warlord is a war boss then once per battle in the command phase you can call a war to do so the war boss must be on the battlefield or in a transport and it can be a war boss or it could also be a speed boss as well if it is a speed boss it's going to be calling a speed war as opposed to a war and if you're using Grasgal Thraka, he can actually call the Great War, which is actually both the Normal War and the Speed War. They've actually got two stages. The first stage is activated once you call the War and lasts until the end of the next command phase. When the first stage ends, the second stage begins and lasts until the start of the next following command phase after that. So it's effectively going for two turns there. And then of course it turns off, it's no longer active. So let's quickly go through both of those and how they actually operate. So in stage one of the Normal War, it's called Call de War. So all core units and all character units from the army are eligible to declare a charge even if they've advanced that turn and they're going to get a plus one to their attacks characteristics as well. Then stage two, so it's the following command phase onwards, it's called get stuck in. You can add one attacks to the attack characteristics of the models in the army. So when stage two is active, stage one is then not active, so you're not getting two additional attacks, it's still just one but they now can't advance and charge. Then as for the speed war, stage one, the big race. All models from the army do not suffer the penalty incurred for the hit rolls when firing assault weapons in the same turn that they advanced. And then vehicle models or biker models that are shooting with the DACA weapons can make one additional attack with a weapon. Then furthermore, each time a model in an orcs vehicle or orcs biker unit makes a ranged attack, you improve the AP by one. Pretty good. And then stage two, give them some DACA. It's just a plus one to the AP there, just like in stage one. Okay, so that's the general rules all covered. There's still the faction abilities to get through as well. So when you select an orc detachment, you're gonna be giving them the clan keyword. Now Gretchen can't get the clan keyword. And they're also going to be getting the clan culture's abilities. Then furthermore, like with all the codexes nowadays, troop units are going to be gaining the objective secure ability. But again, this doesn't include the Gretchen models. So we will be briefly touching upon the clans in a moment. But let's finish off the faction abilities. I'm the boss. So for the Orc players list build, you can only include a maximum of one war boss or one speed boss in a detachment. Quite like a Catan shards there. Then finally, there's a list of models that are pretty much the same as our Necron Dynasty agents. They're not going to affect the clan keywords or the abilities from the clan cultures. So there's a little list there, mainly character units. Okay, so all the easy stuff done. Let's dive deeper into the book. I will be looking at the characters and the units later in the video. Now we need to check on the options of the clans. Now what I'm actually going to do here, very similar to what I did with the Thousand Suns video, I'm going to briefly display on the screen all seven of the clans. So if you do want to see the clans' abilities and relics and all that stuff, just pause the video and have a quick glance. They've all got their own different unique flavours. Some are more melee based, some are more shooty based. 
base, some are geared towards speedy vehicles, and there's a lot of interesting combinations when you add in a clan keyword. Now, quite like our Cryptic Arcana upgrades, the Orcs have their own upgrade pack, which is for vehicle models within the Codex, which is kind of cool, because these feel like relics, but these relics are going to be going on a vehicle model, and these are cool custom jobs. Now, just to show you a few examples, for example, the top one, the Boomer, only for 15 points, you can be adding a weapon onto the actual vehicle, which is 36 inch range, heavy 2d6, strength 8, minus 2 AP, and 2 damage, only for 15 points, I think that's pretty decent, but it can only go on a wagon model with a kill cannon, so it really does have the feel of a relic there. And then the second example I've got on the screen, the Fortress on Wheels. For truck and wagon models, they can get a 5% vulnerable save for only 20 points there. They've then got another list, which is for the mech option. So this is the mech custom jobs for mechs and big mech units. It works in the exact same way. This doesn't count as an actual relic slot, but it just adds points to the list if you select anything. So the example I'm going to show here, the Bionic Oiler. Models that are equipped with the Grot Oiler only, they can use that ability twice per battle instead of once. And what that Grot Oiler does, it's a mech that's actually repairing vehicle models. So a little bit like a Tet Marine from the Space Marines there. So let's get stuck into some actual units. Now I'm gonna be focusing on some of the main ones and the newer releases within this video. So to begin, we must of course talk about Grazgol Thraka, a 300 point monster, quite literally as he's got the monster keyword. He's got a two plus armor save, a four plus invulnerable save. He can't lose more than four wounds in a given phase. And with a toughness of seven and 12 wounds to start with, this is fierce competition for our Katan shards. Now he can still be removed in a single turn, but it's gonna take some mortal wounds from Katan shards or some other avenues such as the plasma Mansa, for example, in order to remove him. Now he is very killy, he can shoot as well as fight. 16 strength 5 shots at 18 inch range. Thankfully, he's only got a blessed skill value of a 5 plus. But then he's got his Gork's Claw, which has 6 attacks at strength 14, minus 5 AP once you add on his Warlord trait. He's also giving rerolls to himself and core or character units within 6 inches in melee, so he's not going to be missing with his attacks. Thankfully, this guy has a set clan within his keywords. Now he can go into any other clans without messing up the abilities because he's got the special. Specialist Lad's ability, but if they do take him in a goth clan, then he's still going to be benefiting from the bonuses. That's going to mean sixes to hit in melee are going to be causing more attacks. Nice. And then for two command points more, you can convert those sixes into fives. And this strategy can actually be used on any character or core unit, so be careful of those extra attacks coming in. Now, if they bring this model, they're very likely going to be filled in the Makari as well. It's a little Gretchen named character who's only 55 points, but it's got a two plus invulnerable save and provides a six plus fill no pain save to nearby units. He doesn't even take up a detachment slot providing that they got Grasgal Thraka in the army list. Another character within a set clan is Zodgrod Wartsnagger. Now he's part of the Snakebite clan, but again he's got the specialist lads ability, quite like our dynastic agents. He's not going to affect the clan culture benefits whatsoever. And he can actually scare our monster units into fighting last in the fight phase within 6 inches. So he's effectively an Orc Judiciar, so keep your monsters away from him. Then we go on to the Beast boss. We can either go on foot or ride a Squigasaur. Now the latter is the preferred option because he's got a minus 1 to damage. Now, both of these guys buff the new beast snagger boys with their hit rolls and the snagger sword jaws have three attacks on top of the rider's attacks which are three strength seven attacks at minus three ap and three damage and if you roll a six to wound instead of doing three damage you're just going to do three mortal wounds which means that you've got less chance of actually preventing those wounds going through now speaking of the beast snagger boys they're the new shiny orc models within the codex these guys are six points more but they're going to be getting strength five on top of the new toughness value that orcs get which is five as well now they can't go in mobs of 30 but they can still go in a large 20 man unit if they wished but remember they do have the beast snagger roll which i've already been through already just to recap we'll go through it again it's going to be a plus one to hit against vehicles and monsters and they've got a six plus invulnerable save so a plus one to the hit roll which means it's going to be hitting on twos in melee or fours at range if they really wanted to do that and they've actually got a few tricky stratagems that they got up their sleeve that you really need to be aware of the first one is the teleporter for two command points and you can effectively have a non-monster orc unit with a power rating of 20 or less and set them up in the teleporter and you can effectively deep strike them but at the bottom of that stratagem you can see that if you select a transport unit any embarked units remain embarked when this unit is set up on the battlefield so this is really strong as a max snagger unit has a power level of 10 or you can have the opportunity of taking a smaller snagger unit and place them within the transport and then deep strike the entire transport in 
with the guys inside. Another one of note here is the Monster Hunters. It's two command points again. It's going to be used in any phase and you select one enemy monster or vehicle unit and up to three beast snagger units from the army and until the end of the phase each time an attack is made by the model in one of those selected beast snagger units that are targeting the selected monster or vehicle they're going to be plusing one to the wound roll. So having a plus one to hit and a plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles could be really bad for us as these guys are strength five anyway so they're going to be wounded on fives against our vehicles and monsters but then adding another one that's going to be wounded on fours. Thankfully our quantum shielding will prevent the bigger weapons from wounding on twos as they're going to still need fours regardless but when you've got a 20 man mob with three attacks each hitting on twos wounding on fours that's doing about 12 to 13 wounds and that's not even including the slugger shots pre-charge so these guys have the capability of wrapping around with our vehicles and absolutely annihilating it then the last strategy worth a mention here isn't actually good for our warriors either especially with the royal warden it's called Snagger Grapple, it's another two command point stratagem. Done in the opponent's movement phase, you select a Beast Snagger Boys unit, that's within engagement range, and on a 4 plus the enemy unit cannot fall back this turn. Okay, it is a 50-50 roll with a 4 plus, but if they get this roll we simply cannot fall back and shoot, in fact we can't even fall back at all. So warriors, monsters and vehicles need to really stay clear of these guys, as a competent player will utilise these stratagems. And these guys can go into the new transports, which are the Hunter Rigs, their toughness 8, and their transport capacity is 15 snagger boys. Now the vehicle's got strength 8 options in both melee and at range and a strength 6 range attacks as well that don't need line of sight. It's also an open top vehicle so the boys inside can be firing from safety. Now it's got a snagged ability which is basically if an enemy vehicle or monster unit loses any wounds as a result of the attack roll a d6 and on a 4 plus the enemy unit cannot finish any move that is more than 12 inches away from this model until the start of your next turn. If this model moves for any reason outside of that 12 inch radius it's going to be destroyed and the effect ends. So this is going to really hinder units such as the Catan Shard or the Silent King perhaps. If you need to be moving around fast they're literally snagged. And then you've got the Kill Rig which is another vehicle and this one's even better. In fact this is probably one of the best units in the Codex in my opinion. This vehicle can do absolutely everything. It's a Swiss Army Knife. It's got 16 wounds, it's toughness 8, it's got a 3 plus armor save, a 6 plus invulnerable save, all the similar weapons to the hunter rig, in fact it's got its own strength 9 weapon which is minus 3 AP and the damage D6, and it can potentially do D3 auto hits, providing it successfully casts the psychic power. And yes you heard that right, this vehicle is a psyker. It knows two psychic powers and denies one, and it can also transport 10B snag models, and then it's even got a set warlord trait if you select it as a warlord, which will give it a plus one damage to squig units within six inches. Then it's got all the same abilities as the hunter as well, with the snagged ability and the open topped ability, all for just 190 points. I also want to talk about Gretchen today, they're still a thing, nothing new here because they're still old models, but if you are new to Orcs then they're just basically meat shields for the bigger and badder units. Now they've got a strategy within the codex for two command points which is Grot Shields. In the opponent's shooting phase you select an Orc infantry unit, then select one Gretchen infantry unit, that's within six inches. Then until the end of the phase enemy models cannot select that Orc infantry unit and instead must target the Gretchen infantry unit if it is a closer visible target. So that effectively means those Gretchens are going to be meat shielding in front of a unit so this is going to be really key for keeping those units alive whether it's burner boys looters flash gits anything of value that can be shielded by gretchen and those gretchen models are only 50 points for the unit for 10 models now thankfully gretchen don't get objective secured or the clan bonuses now the final unit i wanted to mention today is the big ed boss bunker now I always like throwing in those quirky forts but this fortification has some really unique tricks. So it is a fort but it's also a transport for infantry models and it also has the open topped ability so infantry models can shoot out the fort without taking any damage in return. Also it's got the option of relaying a war boss's aura abilities, that's if the war boss is inside the actual fort. Now this thing is 75 points at base cost and it's got the option of adding three big shooters for five points each. But this seems ideal for units such as looters. But what's funny is you can actually use the teleporter stratagem on this thing as it's a transport so you can be deep striking a fortification in with shooter units inside which makes it have some real fun uses, especially when it's filled with units such as flash gits and tank busters perhaps which of course have a shorter range. Okay, before we start talking about the Necron side of the video, let's briefly check out some of the better options in terms of their secondaries for an Orc player. So from the Shadow Operations section, they've got Get the Good Bits, which is a progressive objective. And long story short, it's basically the exact same objective as the Ancient Machinery's objective that the Necrons have except it can be done for Orc core units. However, there's quite a lot of core units within the Orc Codex, so it is a very viable option for an Orc player. 
And another one worth a mention from the Battlefield Supremacy section, which is Green Tide. So at the start of the battle, you divide the battlefield into four quarters, and you're scoring three points at the end of the battle round, if two or more battlefield quarters have alt units that contain 11 or more models within them. Then they score five victory points at the end of the battle round, if all four battle quarters have alt units that have got 11 models or more within them. So this is very easily done if they're playing with hordes. But if you do see them using this, simply ensure that you're trimming the units down to 10 models or less so they simply can't score it. Very easy there. So let's go into the breakdown of how our Necrons can manage the Orc faction. Now Orcs still have a lot of use of their trucks as it's the cheapest method of transport and they're going to be working with the Beast Snaggers as well as the old Orc Boys. So popping the trucks and other transports is a good place to start. They're basically like Rhinos, 10 wounds except they're minus 1 to the damage against strength 7 or less due to the Ramshackles. Now even when the boys disembark from the truck you should still deal with the truck as it is a scoring unit and it can very easily be ignored. Given to how our scabs are in a sense because they can also tie up units and slow things down and they can do it at speed as well. So if you do pop a truck, ideally you're going to be wrapping your units around it before it pops. Yes, there is the off chance of an explosion on a roll of a 6, but the guys inside won't be able to get out, so they're either going to be destroyed or have to use the emergency disembarkation stratagem for a command point, which doubles the chance of dead models as it's a roll of a 1 or a 2 which will remove them. Now you should also aim to pop the trucks while still having enough firepower to take out the actual orcs inside within the transport as you don't want a bunch of objective secured orc boys disembarking into an objective and stealing it. Whereas if they're still within the truck it's a single model without objective secured. Now orcs in general are quite a tricky codex as you can be caught off guard with speed with the wire ability and the core units given the advance and charge as well so it's going to really catch you out but the speed wire in particular is going to be boosting their range and the actual speed of the vehicles. First you need to identify what the orc player is actually going to be bringing to the table. Are they more of a melee based orc mob or are they a shooty based faction which is consisting of vehicles and possibly bikes? Not in every case as you can play shooty on foot too. This is the great unpredictability when you're matching up against orcs. Now when you're going against the more melee orientated orcs, you clearly need to play at range. That's our strength over those melee units as they need to physically get into engagement range in order to start doing the real damage. So keeping them at arm's length for as long as possible is the way to go. This for me makes our Gorse Reapers on our Warriors quite risky. Now you can use and it will wound those Orc Boys on a 4+, plus, but it is very turn dependent because you've only got a 12 inch range, possibly 15 inch range with a Dynasty boost. And if you've got the movement slightly wrong or get caught up by that war, then there's a real danger of them being smacked around in combat. So the longer the range of the weapon, the better in my opinion. Now Gorse Flayers do have the range, but they're now wounded on 5 due to the new Orc Toughness going up to a Toughness 5, which is actually quite huge huge in a way. So this may be a day for the Immortals perhaps. Now they've got a strength 5 weapon at minus 2 AP with the blasters but they can utilize the Tesla carbines as the minus 2 AP isn't actually needed because all boys have got the t-shirt 6 plus armor save. And also the Beast Snagger boys have got the 6 plus invun anyway. So it's a shorter range of 24 inch range but keeping at 24 orcs are moving at 5 and if they do pull their advance and charge move that's going to be a 5 inch movement but then add a potential 6 when they're doing their advance move making an 11 inch move there. Then if they were to maximize a charge that would be another 12 on top of that meaning a grand total of 23 inches so they can't actually declare a charge because they're too far away so 24 inches is actually the sweet spot and that's the best case scenario as well because they've got to maximize the advance roll with a 6 and max the charge roll with a 12 as well just to even stand the chance of getting close. So I'd probably go with a max unit of immortals which is not something I do often. Now a max unit of 10 immortals with the tesla carbines is killing around 8 orc boys on average in a given shooting phase and that's with the exploding sixes, but without them I will be done buffs. Now Tomb Blades are another option to do the exact same role here, but they've got four shots per bike. So if you max a unit of nine of them firing 36 shots, that's going to be removing around 15 orc boys on average. It's got the same range, the same idea, keeping to 24 inch range, on the nose, no closer than that. Now Death Marks could be a nice addition as orcs do love their characters. Now I know Death Marks are slightly overpriced at present, but a full 10 man unit, which is 180 points, should be able to redeem their points back and removing a character or two, which will really hinder the orc player as they're really relying on those buffs. Now when we talk about the more heavy options, the Doomsday Arc and the Doomstalker are sitting ducks. Whether you're going against a Horde or the Speed Freaks, they're going to be getting caught in engagement range and then they'll be deemed useless because of that blast keyword on their weapons. So really you've got to go with those heavy Locust Destroyers because you can plant them on ruins, they can always be on the move because they can move with that heavy weapon and they can maintain that 24 inch gap while firing the weapons. Now it's always best to take the Gorse Destructor as the Strength 7 weapon is just absolute garbage. Then I've got a question to you, is the Annihilation Barge worth a look here too? Double Tesla weapons totaling 13 shots, that's going to remove 7 Orc Boys per turn. So within 2 turns you 
should see your points return there. As for the smaller units that are at range, the Hexmark Destroyer on average will kill 5 guys on his own with his strength 6 pistols, and that's without the Relic Pistol too. If you cross a large horde of boys, then that Relic might be an absolute gem, as on average you're going to kill 5 orcs with a Relic alone. And that's when the units are at full health, which of course, the average of this will lower as the game continues. But when you're adding this to the damage of the 6 actual pistols, it starts to stack up. That will be a total of 10 orc boys that are dead if you're doing that, and that's going to cost the orc player 90 points, whereas the Hexmark Destroyer only costs 75 points and a relic. But once it's deep struck into play, it's going to of course die. Now it is going to act as a distraction unit, because a large orc boy unit will have to go and deal with it. So deep strike him in 12 inches away, because that's the gauntlet of the Conflagrator's range is 12 inches, and deep strike him in the opposite direction of the rest of your army, so that the orcs have to actually move and charge your hex mark then they're going to find themselves completely out of position and are turned down with a third of the mob depleted now don't forget morale too now it's not as big in ninth edition but if you do clear 10 orcs and they're going to be failing morale they will fail morale regardless unless they're spending command points so one will actually run automatically then the other 19 boys if there is 19 more boys are also going to run on rolls of a one which is about three more on average so a grand total of 14 boys on average are going to be removed by a single hex mark destroyer now if the orc player goes more vehicle heavy with the speedy bikes and buggies and all the other crazy vehicles they've got then i think we've got to still aim to outgun them now orcs ballistic skill isn't that strong but they do tend to have a lot of shots to make up for it now quantum shielding could see some uses against this type of list to block out a lot of those strength 8 weapons that they have and not many of their fast attacks can actually fly so if you're able to hide our flying vehicles on top of terrain features this may prevent them from actually getting into engagement range of our vehicles that have got the blast abilities such as the doomsday art for example now i still wouldn't bother with a canoptic doomstalker because it's still a sitting duck there on the ground as for our melee options i think only the fast options are viable here getting the jump on the orcs in combat could be key so for me this rules out the lich guard as they're moving too slow now a veil of darkness could get them there but they're still needing a nine inch charge possibly an eight inch charge with an code or the butcher's custom code but it's still a risky play now canoptic wraiths and scorbit destroyers being much quicker getting into the action are probably better options wraiths have obviously got their invuncee which can bolster their survivability but a lot of the melee side of the york troops is minus one ap with their choppers only the knobs and the bigger stuff can access the better options but it's less frequent within their lists now a katan shard could actually see play here because there's not actually that many psychers within the orc faction that's a katan shard's kryptonite now as for the actual orc psychers an orc player isn't going to be relying too heavily on them and even when they are relying on them they're more of a support psyker for the actual orc army as opposed to using witch fire attacks so for example a psycho may be using the jump to get a core unit that's within 12 inches of the psyker to be able to relocate 9 inches away from enemy models. They're more likely going to be doing that as opposed to doing smite onto Arctan shards. But even if they do, you can very easily keep a Katan Shard away from a Psyker because it can only lose 3 wounds in a given phase. So it's quite nice to throw a Nightbringer into an Orc Boy mob as he's only going to be losing 3 wounds in that fight phase. And with his Reaping Sweep profile, he can throw out 12 attacks, killing about 7 of them. And of course you've got to add all the Katan powers as well. And if you want to use his Entropic Blow, you can be using that to smash up Orc Vehicles and the bigger stuff. Now a Void Dragon is also a shout due to the anti-vehicle bonuses with range and melee attacks as well as his ability to gain wounds back when destroying vehicles. Now a few units I wouldn't bring, I'm on the fence with the Silent King, he's a great support character but he can be very easily overrun in a game like this if you're not careful. You're probably going to lose the Annihilation Beams early, and as he loses more wounds he's going to be dropping his other weapons as well when he's bracketed. In fact I'd probably not go with any other Lord of War models in this game, Orcs can play quantity over quantity if they want to, and a full unit of Orc boys can throw out 91 attacks with their choppers, and that's without any buffs, and remember those can cultures too, for example the Goth Clan, giving extra attacks on sixes, and of course as well if they're going to be doing that war, the advance, the charge, and the extra attack as well, ouch. Now I've already mentioned the Lich Guard as well, I probably wouldn't bring them because they're a bit too slow for this kind of game, and I've already mentioned the Doomstalk as well because it can't fly and it needs to stay stationary to be using its high profile cannon. Now moving away from the units and looking at the actual dynasty codes within the Necron faction, I'd definitely be going with a ranged dynasty code all the way here so likely going to be the mephric code or perhaps i go with the healthy paranoia from the custom codes but you will of course lose out on the dynastic stratagem but instead you'll be able to pair it with another one of the custom codes such as eternal conquerors or maybe unyielding for that invulnerable save now if you wanted to go melee with your necron faction there's butchers or the novak code of course maybe consider rad reaved as you're bringing down toughness 5 to toughness 4 on those infantry models which could factor nicely for those scorbit destroyers using their threshers as far as secondaries go purge the vermin would probably spread the orcs quite thin rather than the green tide coming straight towards you but if i'm honest orcs aren't playing that way right now they're more of an elite army at the moment but that kind of makes the secondary even
even better as there's less models on the field to cover all the table quarters. You're also good if you're taking the ancient machineries and getting a buttload of scarabs as usual to do their scoring, that's what they do best. Something to be aware of though with the scarabs, don't use them as speed bumps in this game as the orcs will simply overrun them and you'll literally be given the orcs free movement. Movement to charge your scarabs, then the pile and then the consolidation. In this game, the scarabs need to be keeping a low profile, out of sight, out of mind, which thankfully tends to be the case with the scarabs, because more often than not, they're getting ignored. But yeah, if it was up to me, I'd definitely be going with the range faction, keeping at 24 inch range minimum, keep them at arm's length, and try and outshoot the rest of the army there. That's what I would do. Let me know what you would do below. Have you had experience playing the new 9th edition orcs? Let me know how it went below with your necrons. What dynasty did you use? And simply did you win, yes or no? Before we go, we're gonna do our shout out of the day, going to Apocalypse Plant for his comment relating to the Cryptech Arcana video we did recently. He's pointed out the Atta Vindicator ignores line of sight and can target characters, so it's a lot better than people think. And he's got a decent amount of thumbs up that agree with him. My only issue is that it's on a Psychomancer, which isn't actually the best Cryptech at present. But keep the comments coming in guys, and on the next Necron video, the best comment will be shouted out. As for this video, Drop a like on your exit, subscribe if you're new, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>